Hey everybody, it's uh, Mad Master here, and I'm doing another video. And this time is to kind of clear the air about uh, my Roy Moore slash, well, sort of subtly uh, about Jimmy Page and 70s Rock and uh, Jailbait and all that shit. So I just want to clear the air about how what I think about the Me Too thing and just kind of maybe uh, give a little bit of a perspective of what I'm trying to go for or what I meant by some of the things that I said because I don't want to be misinterpreted or misunderstood. And the thing is, is that overall I think it's fine that a lot of women and even men are coming forward as far as with this whole phenomenon with Me Too. I just see that there might be a danger in it going too far into sensationalism and bullshit. And that's kind of my point. And honestly, like, the right wing and people that attack me to don't make things any easier. Like, for example, uh, there's a thing on Fox News about uh, Ringo Starr doing a cover of She's 16 or something, some old 60s R&B standard. I, mean, I don't think I've heard that song, but... Uh, and then they were like, oh, well, he had a thought about that. Blah, blah, blah. So the thing is, is that, I mean, they, they can use the excuse that, oh, rock and roll is like more liberal, you know, and uh, they've tolerated underage sex or, you know, promiscuous sex, if that's even relatable to sexual harassment or the issues of consent. Which sometimes they are, and sometimes they're sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. But the fact of the matter is, the right wingers and the people that are accused of uh, sexual harassment or assault in this Me Too movement really aren't really making things any easier for themselves a lot of the time. So, I mean, one day maybe I think there will be someone that's falsely accused, and maybe some of the accusations have already been false. But overall, it is a good thing to some extent. Now, the problem I have is that the sensationalist media, and uh, you know, mainly like uh, the blogs and the vlogs that talk about this stuff, oftentimes focus on aspects that aren't really relevant to the issue. Like, uh, to give an example, like recently Donald Trump said something about, like, or he didn't say anything. No. No, he said something about uh, a woman, like, on a golf course, like, I think it was in 2000, 2000 or 2001 or something. And there was this, this was, uh, there was this huge uproar over this article because it's like, uh, they quoted Donald Trump saying, oh, he said the word pussy about a girl or something like, uh, so he was like, uh, oh, that was, that's a fine piece of pussy. That's what he said or some shit like that. And then they try to tie it into the Me Too movement. Okay, so for one, a lot of men talk about women that way. I don't like to use the word pussy because I just, you know, I'll, I'll just give a little tidbit from my my own life and why why this actually kind of pissed me off this article because it's kind of like well he said this thing so it's tied in somehow to consent. I mean. If you believe that uh, rape or assault are about power, why would you believe that objectifying women in such a way, uh, as long as you have boundaries, has anything to do with that? Because millions of men will talk in the lock, you know, the locker room talk, you know, and talk about women's looks and stuff, and they're not they're not out there raping women or anything like that. So this correlation is causation. This art, these articles that came out about Trump, what he said on the golf course, because he said it to a reporter or something, is like this troubling allegation about what Donald Trump said on a golf course. And I'm just like rolling my eyes because it's like all my life, like my older brother's like, yeah, you got to get some pussy, man. You know, all this stuff about pussy and like my dad's like, listen to ZZ Top. And this is when I was growing up as a teenager. So, um, and my dad are driving, and this is a long time ago, so I pardon, you know, me dredging up the past, but, uh, so we're driving, he's playing this easy Top song, tube snake boogie, 
and he's like, you know what this song's about? Pussy. <laughs> and it's like, okay. So I heard this word pussy around me all of my life. How do, you should get pussy, hot piece of ass, hot pussy, you know, all these little things. I've never been the ones, the one to say that. I just say like that's a hot chick or whatever, which is questionable in, self, in itself to some feminists, of course. But that's that's kind of the extent of what I say. I'm not trying to play the good guy or anything here at all, because I'm not a good guy as far as this stuff goes, according to them. But I'm just saying, I've never been fond of the word pussy or anything thing like that, or getting pussy or whatever. I like to use the word getting laid, but even there, I'm just like kind of carefully uh, framing that. So when these things get conflated in these articles, like, uh, uh, you know, the Matt Lauer thing with, you know, talking about, well, troubling that he was having sex with women on, you know, I, I don't know if it was on the road or something like it was troubling, you know, talking about consensual sex, how people term, you know, people they find attractive, even if it's objective, objectification, all these little things are thrown in these articles. And it's almost like, well, if you go too far with those other extraneous elements or try to tie them in too much, then that is dangerous. So I think it is dangerous to say, well, if you find a woman's looks appealing and you're kind of, let's say he didn't say pussy. Let's say he said, oh, that's a really hot chick over there and or something like that or that, oh, she's really hot or something. And then. The article wouldn't have been as, and as sensationalistic, obviously, because he said pussy. But let's say it, it goes that far. If, if we're at this time where the blogs are talking about that and tying it into Me Too and all this shit, there's only one reason why Donald Trump should be tied into Me Too, is, and it's the allegations that we don't know which ones are true or not. Same with Bill Clinton. But as far as people, how they talk, I mean, it's just... If they're if trying to, it's like, it's not the attitude. It's, it's sexuality shouldn't be tied into the power dynamic of, of rape. How it's, you know, people say it's more about power. So your sexuality, what you find sexually attractive is not correlational to that. If you buy into that narrative necessarily. Now I happen to, uh, sort of somewhat agree to, to some extent with Camille Paglia, what she has said about like how people have over-dramatized the whole like rape is about power and there's no sexuality in it. Like she says that's bullshit. She says it's about sex. I would, I would go somewhere towards the middle, but I say 60% power, maybe 40% sex. I wouldn't say it's even, uh, you know, relatable as far as that goes, but it is about power. And to me, I don't understand assault or rape as far as how they would turn a person on. I mean, you know, maybe maybe there's been some scenes where I've seen where it's kind of like, wow, it's just so intense that it's kind of it's kind of hot, I guess. You know, some kind of scene with some aggressive sexuality in it or something. But it, for the most part, I think it's just like, I don't see why that would be appealing. But with this Me Too thing, all I all I want to know. I mean, all I want to talk about is the fact that people need to be careful with regards to how far it goes into these other territories. That's that's my main concern. I think people it could it could turn into a witch hunt. It hasn't quite yet, even though some commentators have said it it has. But at the same time, I think we need to be careful to still, you know, go for due process. And I'll, there's been some arguments I've had online with people. And one of those things is about due process and like, uh, you know, whether or not we need due process for a company makes a decision. So their due process is enough. Well, I don't know about that. You know, if a private company does that, that's not really a, a court of your peers or whatever, you know, it, that's in the constitution. So I don't think necessarily a company investigating charges is a uh, relevant, is relevantly uh, on the same level as actual, you know, 
an actual court appearance or whatnot. You know, take the case of, uh, what's that guy's name? And uh, uh, I'm going to look him up right now. What the hell is that guy's name? The guy in Canada who was part of BBC. And he was like uh, Gomeni or whatever his name was, right? So he actually went to court. Or Go Gomeshi, excuse me. Jean Gomeshi. He was accused by a few women of, of rape or, or sexual assault. And he was actually cleared by the court that, you know, there was, it was, there was some other agenda there. So, I mean, that's rare that actually a guy would go to court and have that happen. But it happened. It does happen. False accusations happen. So I think we need just to be careful. We need to look at this in a real way. And, and, and the conversation, that's, there's a lot of conversations that are not being had. And what I'm concerned with is that there's going to be a chilling effect with dating, with trying to get better with women, with trying to, you know, meet more women, you know, which I, honestly, that's what I'm trying to, you know, that's part of my life that I'm going through. So when this comes about, I'm just like, oh my God, are they going to misinterpret like me actually coming up to them in the first place? I don't mean like I'm going to fucking go grope a girl or something. It's ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So it's more about, What's acceptable, what's not? With these clouded, these clouded uh, blogs and stuff talking about stupid shit like, uh, just you know, like the whole thing with the Donald Trump pussy comment about that's a fine piece of pussy there, right there. You know, just like, just stuff like that. There, there are little tidbits and little uh, sprinklings of that everywhere you go, where they talk about something totally irrelevant. You know. And, you know, like with the Roy Moore thing, I think we should talk about the lack of consent, consent more than necessarily the, especially when it comes to like, oh, he's going to a mall and shit. It's like, okay, yeah, fine. He's a predator. I'll admit it. But it's like, it's, the way that it's being framed is like anybody that, the, the way that some of these sentences of these blogs go, it's like, oh my God, he's actively pursuing women. So that's bad. Even while well, he's pursuing girls, I, honestly, like little, you know, little girls, but I'm saying that the way that it's framed as far as he's actually actively doing that in the first place is suspect in some of the way that these uh, words are phrased. So getting get the way that he's going to a mall and seeking out underage women, that's actually the underage women part is separate from the actively going out to meet girls. But the way that they put them together in these articles seems like oh well if you go out and get go try to get girls you're like a, a predator uh, 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 you know so that's my whole point with that video and i hope it wasn't misinterpreted i'm on board with a lot of what you know the, this movement is saying i just i'm trying to you know and i i honestly do not like a lot of modern feminism so it's when it's sprinkled in there these stupid ideas that or at least i perceive them as stupid are sprinkled in there it kind of pollutes and uh ruins the whole dish so to speak sometimes so that's all i gotta say that was just a follow-up video to that